Hello and welcome YouTube. Today we are going to be looking at saving the game and actually adding some kind of gold system. And as always you can get this scene and the end scene from the link down below. Let's start by making our asteroid prefab. So go to the scenes folder and open up the level 1 scene. Go to the scene view and to your prefabs folder right here. And let's create a golden asteroid. So let's copy the or duplicate the asteroid 1 prefab and rename it to golden asteroid. And let's also duplicate the uh, small asteroid material red right here that we have and call this the golden asteroid material. Then double click on the golden asteroid so that it opens up in the preview right here and drag the golden asteroid on every single one of these level of details. Zero, one, and two. Then click on the golden asteroid right here, the material, and change the albedo to something golden-ish. So this looks quite good. And also let's play around with the smoothness. So let's make it like that. And the metallic probably will drag that down. And for the emission color right here for this, the HDR, uh, just drag it up in the white area a little bit. Play around with that. Okay, probably just make a little more yellowish. Okay, this looks quite good to me. Okay, go and open up the asteroid script so golden asteroid and then open up the asteroid controller and in here at a public bool let's make a public just a bool and just call this the is golden asteroid and set it to false and then copy this bool and and down in the destroy asteroid function and here we want to check if it's a golden asteroid so check if the asteroid is a golden asteroid and then if we destroy it we want to add gold okay next up we have to go to our asteroid manager so that we can also spawn spawn the golden asteroids okay go and open up that script and let's add a public variable right here somewhere in here under here this looks good a public float and golden asteroid spawn chance and set it to something like 0 0.2 which is going to be 20 percent and again copy this value and where we spawn a new asteroid let's make a float let's make a random number like this and just random dot range from zero float to one float like so and now if the random number is less than this the asteroid spawn chance that means that we want to spawn a golden asteroid so spawn golden asteroid and else we want to spawn the normal asteroid and to do that the spawn position we should get that up here we are going to use that and for the game object go we want to get that up in here too it's like this and set it equal to null and then remove the game object down here and copy this whole line and this is the normal asteroid right here so paste this in here and then also we need a asteroid prefab so go up here and let's declare a new public game object so public game object and golden asteroid prefab now that we have the prefab we can actually instantiate it so we just basically copy this line the whole line and paste it to the golden asteroid and where we instantiate the prefab right here just uh, replace this line okay so we have this right here and in here we want to spawn the golden asteroid prefab. Now this should be working and golden asteroids should already be spawning. So let's try it out. Let's assign the references. So for the asteroid manager we need to assign the prefab. So the golden asteroid prefab right here and drag and drop this in here. Awesome. The spawn chance is good and if I start the game. I can see now that we have a golden asteroid right here and it works and can be destroyed right here. See, it's flying towards us and it goes red when I hover over it if, when I can shoot it. Awesome. Now that we have that, let's implement the save and load system. So go to your scenes folder and open up the menu scene and also go to your scripts folder and create a new class and call this the save class. Double click to open it up in Visual Studio and in here delete everything up here and we don't need the bono behavior and like this just a save class and in here what we want to save we actually want to save just a public int and this is going to represent the gold value so gold and let's set it equal to 100 so we can actually look at it and debug it okay we have a class that is nothing else than these four lines actually and just we set the gold to a integer and then 100 okay let's go back to unity and create a new class and let's call this the save manager and right away go to the game manager game object right here in the hierarchy and we know that this is a don't destroy on load game object since the game manager has a don't destroy on load function right there on this game object okay so since this doesn't get does not get destroyed just drag and drop the save manager on here so that it does not get destroyed also and will load in other scenes so then double click to open it up and let's right away create an instance so we can use it from every single script so public static 
save manager and instance and then in the awake function if the instance is equal to zero null assign the instance to this now how is this whole save and load thing going to work so we are going to serialize this save class into an xml file you can also make it, uh, put it into a json file it doesn't really matter so, but i'm just going to use xml since i know it a little bit better to do that we cannot really have any functions in here we are just going to use this basically as a structure as for our values so it can hold the values so in here we want need a private save class and let's call this the save information and we also need a public function a public void save and then we also need a private void and let's call this the load function like this so that we can save and load files that already exist and in here we are going to obviously need to use the system input output so using system.io so we can actually write to a file and then we also want to be using the system.xml serialization right here like this we have to include these two using tags in here okay and now we can actually start working on the logic in here once we hit the awake function we want to make this an instance and also load the file okay in the load function we have to actually check if there is a file so when the player let's say downloads your game from any google play store or whatever uh, he does not have a file to save his game into or no progression so we have to create one which means that we have to check if the player prefs player prefs dot has key has key like this and we are going just to say uh, save this as a save file like this if it has key then we want to load and deserialize and else if we don't have anything we want to create a file a file and save it okay so to create a file let's make a debug.log and creating file and to do that we have to make a save info equal to a new save class like this and then actually call the save function to serialize it awesome in the save function we're just going to make a string let's call this the serialized object and this is going to be equal to a serialized function where we pass in our save info game object save info like this so this is the game object from the save class okay let's call this the save class to just to make sure save class like this okay and let's create this function let's go down here let's make a private string uh, function and call this the serialized function and it will take in a save class and let's call this the to be serialized and this is going to be quite weird if you have never done it so we have to make a xml serializer let's call this xml and let's make it equal to the xml serial to a new xml serializer actually xml serializer and here in it wants the type so the type is obviously the save class like right here and let's just to make sure make a type of and like this and in parentheses next up we have to add a string writer let's call this the writer and make that equal to a new string writer and now the xml serializer has a function obviously the serialized function and this is just going to need a stream so let's pass in the writer and then a object which is just going to be the to be serialized object right here that we pass in and then also return just the writer dot to string like this quite simple if you know what this does if not just copy and paste it and probably don't worry about it and let's also make a private save class while we are at it and let's call this the deserialize class deserialize and in here we want to pass in a string and this is going to be the xml serialized string and then we want to deserialize this xml string okay and again we want a xml serializer like before we had and let's call this a xml again let's make this equal to a xml to a new xml serializer again with the type of and save class next up we want a string reader instead so just the other way around let's call this the reader and let's make it equal to a new string reader like this and pass in the xml serialized right here that we want to deserialize and then just to return the xml dot deserialize function and pass in the reader and we want to return it as a save class this function returns a object as you can see if you hover over it and we want to cast this object to a save class right here because we need that to deserialize it let's now work on the load function if we have something we want to deserialize it and then set it up so here we are creating a new save class but if we have a already existing save class we just want the save class to be equal to the deserialized stuff so let's just make the save class equal to the 
deserialize function and then what we want to pass in here again the player prefs dot get string and we want to get the string that's called save file and also in the save function up here where we serialize the object into a string a xml string then we also want to actually set it up so player prefs dot set string and in here it wants a key which is just going to be the save file and the other one is going to be the value which is a string and just the serialized object right here and this should be our save and load system and let's try and set it up so if i go to the prefabs folder and click on our golden asteroid i also want to check the is golden asteroid right here and if i double click the asteroid controller don't forget to check it for sure and scroll down here in the destroy asteroid function in the is golden asteroid i want to go to the save manager dot instance dot and now i need a function to add gold so let's go to the save manager and at the top right here let's make a public function a public uh, void and call this the add gold function and just go to the save class right here okay and increase this gold that we save so save class dot gold and just do plus plus and then call the save function which will again serialize the whole object put it into a string and then s uh, save it under the player prefs with this key awesome and let's also while, while we're at it let's make a public int get gold and just return the save class dot gold like this so that we can actually get the save class gold value now go to the asteroid controller and where we have the add gold so just go in here and put in the add gold and call this function and now we should be adding gold every time we destroy a golden asteroid if the asteroid prefab that we have for the golden asteroid is checked as the golden asteroid awesome Let's go to the scenes and let's go back to the menu scene like this, save everything. Then go to the 2D view and let's make a gold display in our shop. So let's go to our shop menu right here. Open it up in the hierarchy as well. Uh, shop menu, right click and create a new empty game object and let's call this the gold display. And under the gold display, reset everything right here and just add a image. So UI and image and just select a sprite right here which one you like i guess i quite like this one just the simple one the coin back and if you want the gold medal go for that i'm just going to do the coin back right here and under the gold display also add a text and let's call this the gold text in the hierarchy and let's put, put in something like 1000 and for the font as always the robot bold and the color is going to be white and add a shadow and put it on four and negative four. Leave it to the left and center it in the middle like so. And let's move it to the right a little bit and then select the Rect tool and click on it, hit Alt and just drag it up. And now also increase the font size like this so it just fits nicely. Grab this whole object, the gold display and move it to the top right right here. Something like this is quite all right, I guess. Click on Direct Transform, hold Shift, and anchor it to the top right. While we are at it, also drag the title up a little bit so it looks a little bit better. And let's go to the Menu Manager right here and open it up by double clicking on it. And let's also add a text field so that we can change the gold amount every time you load the menu. Let's make a public text and let's call this the gold text. And let's also make a new function. So let's go to the bottom and up down here. Let's make a private void, update gold text. And in here, just go to the gold text dot text. And that is going to be equal to the save manager dot instance dot get get gold right here dot to string right there. Awesome. Now, every time we load the shop, which is either at the start of the game or after we finish or just return from a level we want to instantiate this basically menu manager mono behavior object and call it right here in the start function so we update the text now the only thing left to do is in the menu manager once the script compiles set up the references that we added right here so the gold text is going to be equal to the gold text and now if i start the game and go to the shop I have 100 gold right here and you should have a creating new file right here. I started it two times because Unity crashed for some reason. I'm sorry for that, but you should have 100 gold, okay? Because if I go to Visual Studio and the save class, we have set it up to 100 gold right here. Awesome. Now if I go to the menu and the play button and hit level one, 
And if I fly around and wait for a golden asteroid, okay, right here I see a golden asteroid down here, actually two of them. And now if I try and shoot it, uh, let's go down. Now I'm focusing him right here. This is the golden asteroid. I added one gold and saved it. So if I go to the menu and the shop, I should have, okay, I actually have two asteroids. I should have 102 gold or 101. It depends on how many asteroids you hit. Now if I go back to the scene view and restart the game, I still should have 102 gold because we are loading the file. Okay, awesome. I have 102 gold. That's it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And in the next uh, video, we are going to look at setting some prices for the spaceships and actually having to complete the levels and probably making level two available. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, like the video and see you in the next one. Bye.